Welcome, friends, to the Enduring Gifts of Marvin Gaye podcast, brought to you by your 26-year listening veteran, Jessica. Join me as we celebrate these enduring gifts, the songs of Marvin Gaye. In each episode, I will share insights about the music and recount life experiences tied to it. I'm hoping to inspire you to take a first or your 500 first listen to these songs that are truly the enduring gifts of Marvin Gaye. Hello, and welcome to tonight's episode which is going to cover the song Inner City Blues Make Me Wanna Holler. The final song, the conclusion of the album What's Going On, released May of 1971. The song is five minutes and 28 seconds long. It's written by Marvin Gaye and James Nix Jr. I just saw a cute little article on James Nix Jr. He started working with Harvey Fuqua, actually, at a record label that Harvey owned with his wife, um, who's a sister of Barry Gordy. And in the early 60s, Harvey sold his label over to Motown, and James Nix transitioned over to Motown as a part of that sale. And he was a songwriter, along with Um, being a janitor and an elevator operator at the Motown headquarters. So my man was grinding, right? They said he also had eight children that he was raising and supporting. So he was doing what he had to do. And he was a staple at the Motown headquarters. So he kind of started working with Marvin um, right before the album of What's Going On when Marvin was writing songs for and producing the group The Originals. Uh, James Nix co-wrote with him on a song or two for them. And then when it got to the album What's Going On, he co-wrote Mercy, not Mercy, Mercy Me. He co-wrote Inner City Blues, What's Happening Brother, and God is Love. So, you know, he's influential on this album. And he was explaining how I, I don't know if he was interviewed. Um, they say that he recalled this actually in the year that it said he died, which was in 1998. Um, it said that, you know, he was, you know, around Marvin and it sounded like, you know, he had a, a pretty good tune coming together, but he didn't have the lyrics for it yet. And so they got together and started pulling together the lyrics that ended up being the lyrics of the song, but they, they didn't have the title for it. And then one day... Uh, James was reading a local Detroit newspaper and it it had some article that had the title Inner City of Detroit. And that's when it occurred to him. He was like, that was what their song was about. It was Inner City Blues. So that's the foundation of how the song comes to be. What this song is and what the headline for this episode is the birth of Marvin Groove. Um, I can't wait to get further into Marvin's catalog with you, to dive further into albums and songs of Marvin Gaye with you. Um, there's so much about the um, mastery and the genius of Marvin Gaye as a musician that I'm just chomping at the bit to be able to um, start providing my insight on. And I mentioned this somewhere in some recent episode where I said that Marvin Gaye was a percussionist and that that was going to come into play in many ways further into Marvin's career and what I mean by that and I just you know my episodes are explicit I I have to speak what I have to speak Marvin Gaye 
is the baddest motherfucker that ever was, ever was. And that's like what I'm trying to just contain myself and my excitement about being able to explore and discuss with you um, into the depth of Marvin Gaye's catalog because there is just example after example of what I am talking about to, I'm sorry, I can't even, you shut your mouth, you know, <laughs> I'm just talking about Marvin, you know what I'm saying? Marvin is a bad mother, you shut your mouth, I can't even shut my mouth, I have to say it, Marvin is the baddest motherfucker that there ever was. And when I just have to classify it as there ever was, I really do, I'm going to before and after and until now, and just like, still now, no one is touching his shit, no one is touching his level, and it's just, that's why it's like, ever was, is the only appropriate classification for that. Um, and I've, I'm gonna just do an episode that will break that shit all the way down, so that there will be no confusion as to what I mean by that classification. Um, but as far as Marvin Gaye's percussionist groove, uh, this song in particular, Inner City Blues, is where we are unleashed upon, for the first time, completely, a sampling. And it's not a sample, it's a full experience, so I don't even need to say sampling. It's definitely not a sample. It's our first full-on feast experience of Marvin Gaye Groove. So, I don't know if you've had a chance to check out my Pinterest page. I don't know if you do Pinterest like I mentioned before. I never did Pinterest before. I finally started doing Pinterest, which was hand-in-hand hand exactly at the same time that I launched this podcast. Um, but... I, I came up with just a little graphic and it is a little catchphrase. It's like a little f phrase that I've coined that, and it's from my first episode, but it just, I said it on the spot, but it totally captures um, what I am talking about. And I, this right here, this conversation right here will provide, um, you know, explanation into this little catchphrase that I coined, which is that there's groove. And then there's Marvin Groove, okay? Because what I mean by that is when I made the statement a few episodes back, and again, it's repeating what I said, that Marvin Gaye is a percussionist. And when I, you know, equals Groove, you know, you, we can call him a percussionist or we can just call it Groove. And that's the way Marvin classified his own stuff. He called his stuff Groove. Um... There is a moment, <laughs> perfect example of what I'm talking about. Oh, I love this. It's from, and so it's very relevant. It's still this album. It's our 1972 Live at the Kennedy Center concert that we touched on in the Write On episode. Um, Marvin's playing, right? The concert at the Kennedy Center. And... Actually, it is this song right here. It is Inner City Blues. When they get to Inner City Blues in the concert, which is the third song into the concert because we have already discussed the genius and the purpose with which Marvin started performing that his album, What's Going On, in this concert. He starts with his thesis, which is the song right on. His thesis for his album, What's Going On, in my opinion, is the song Right On. So that is the song that he opened this concert, which played the album, What's Going On. And then he goes in order from there. So if he's going in order from there, he's going to play Right On, and then he plays Holy Holy. Then he goes into Inner City Blues. Then he goes into What's Going On, What's Happening Brother, Flying High in the Friendly Sky, Save the Children, God is Love, Mercy, Mercy Me. And you know what, though? In the disc that I have of that album, I don't believe that we hear Mercy, Mercy Me on that, uh, in that concert. I don't know that that means he didn't perform it. But in the disc and the, the release that we all have access to, um, I don't believe that the song Mercy, Mercy Me is on there. But just that is the order that he played his album. And so 
you know, if there are some criticisms that are made of this concert, which I explained that there were criticisms made of the concert in a specific article. I have, you know, I already mentioned it in my previous episode. I disparaged the hell out of that article. So you understand my take on that article. <laughs> Um, but one of the things that that article said, and that, uh, you know, I've read other places, I've read in essays of, of Motown, uh, what's going on album, re-release, reissue, whatever, the liner notes, you know, if it gets around to mentioning this concert, kind of a, a criticism of it is that, you know, it's, it's reported that the musicians weren't well rehearsed, I guess, that they didn't get a lot of, um, dry run rehearsal time with Marvin on the songs before it was time to sit down and we're doing the concert now. And in a way, you know, that's a thing that I, I kind of hear multiple times in discussions of, of live performances, uh, musicians with Marvin Gaye. Uh, even the artist Sheila E., the percussionist, she played with Marvin towards the end. Uh, you know, on the sexual healing tour. And I've heard her made comments that, you know, she didn't, they didn't get a lot of rehearsal time with Marvin or whatever. But here's, you know, and I don't believe that this was Marvin's attitude, but this is my attitude. <laughs> um, here's how I, you know, it's like, I'm fucking Marvin Gaye, bitch. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't know my songs. You're about to play a concert for me. You don't know my fucking song? Like, learn the song. You know what I'm saying? It's, you can buy the record, okay? Learn the fucking song. So, that's me. I really don't think that Marvin Gaye conducted himself like that. <laughs> uh, oh. But you know what I mean? So it's like for a professional musician to want to try and kind of bitch and complain about, oh, I, you know, I didn't get a chance to totally practice with you before, you know, we were up on stage needing to perform it. It's like, ah, bitch, kind of, you know why I'm gonna, I am saying anything like this too, is that my dad, I've already pointed this out. My dad is a professional musician. My dad can pick up his instrument and on the spot, listen to anything for just a couple of bars and start playing along on that shit. You know what I'm saying? It's like, be a skilled musician. Okay? <laughs> no offense to any musicians out there. <laughs> That might be of the mind of being able to understand where other musicians that have made these kind of comments about trying to perform with Marvin Gaye. No offense to that, but I'm just, like I said, I am totally speaking for myself. I'm not trying to claim that this was Marvin's attitude about it. But also just being the product of a professional musician who is not a problem to very quickly learn what he needs to learn to be able to jump in real quick. It's like, and especially if it's, you're not even being put on that type of a spot, though. It's like, it's Marvin Gaye, okay? You can go by the album really quick and learn the fucking song. So, the end, okay? But let's go back to why I was even getting very defensive about that. It's that an extra it pisses me off actually okay so when i'm listening to that live in 1972 concert and they get to the song um inner city blues i can hear where they start fucking up marvin's song and i i understand it from a sense of a kind of the way that i understand a reaction that my father has ew, when fuck ups might be made in a live performance that he's giving there. We really don't have time or room for that shit. So my dad, professional musician, like paid touring musician in, in, in his heyday, which was the seventies. Um, he has explained how, 
you know, musicians that he would be playing for, they dock your pay. You fuck up, they dock your pay, all right? And kind of like when we're practicing, you fuck up, we dock your pay. You got to know your shit. Your shit needs to be tight. Like we're making a tight sound here. So what you're doing is you're stepping in with your instrument and that's what you're bringing to the table. That's your you know, contribution to the team effort right here. Don't fuck it up, right? And But if you are going to fuck up my performance, I'm docking your pay. So it's a big fucking deal, dude. It's like when you're a musician, playing your instrument correctly to the song is your job. Okay, It's like if there's that saying, you got one job to do. Well, it's to fucking play my song correctly, fall. When we're on stage right now, right now is the time that it counts. We're doing this right now. Don't fuck up my song. And so... It's that is these people's job and in the moment when shit is fucked up, it's a big, huge deal that's going to need to be addressed again when we're off stage, right? Like those moments are caught by them in the moment, might not necessarily be caught by us in the moment, but the musicians, and especially the skilled ones, they catch it in the moment and this is not okay, right? So in this concert, when they get to performing this song, Inner City Blues Makes Me Want to Holler, they start to fuck it up right in the beginning. And I can tell, you know, I, I'm like, you know, I'm reacting like this because I'm like, oh my God, they're in the concert right now, though. They're in the concert right now. And they're fucking up this song. And so, but, you know, and Marvin handles it. Marvin handles it because, and, you know, he, and I don't, think musicians really I've never you know heard of or experienced a musician freaking the fuck out in the moment and they just stop playing and they start screaming at the person that just messed it up but you know so there's just we got to take control of the situation and we got to get it back on track and so Marvin does that he just he takes he takes control and he actually starts to say no 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 because those are lyrics of this song <laughs> Um, but they're not necessarily the lyric right at that moment when he starts singing that. That's a little bit farther into the song. But he's no, 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 no. Like, mm, mm. So he just stops, kind of, you know, it's very, he handles it very professionally. He handles it very delicately, very gently to them right there in that moment. I don't know how it may have been addressed afterward, but in the moment it's handled in a very, um, appeasing way for us as the audience. We're not traumatized by Marvin's reaction to this. So he just, I do believe that he actually starts to speak and he um, is making, you know, contact and in, in, in communication with the, the conductor of the musicians. And he's just telling them, you know what, we're going to take it from the top. We're going to start it over. We're going to take it from the top. He's like, because they're in the groove right now. You know, we, we, I need to do this song real, real groovy and they're in the groove right now. So we're going to take it from the top. Tell everybody we're going to take it from the top. And so then, you know, and you can tell, he's like, you can tell that he's got a smile on his face because he's speaking through a smile and, um, he speaks to the audience now and he's like, yep. He's like, we got to do this song real good and groovy for you. And he's like, it's a bit more groovy right now, isn't it? It's a bit more groovy. <laughs> He's like, they're in the groove now. They're in the groove. So that's what I'm talking to you about Marvin Gaye groove. There's groove and then there's Marvin groove. Okay. And so this song is the unleashing. It is the beginning point of our full on exposure to the depth, the degree to which I'm telling you Marvin Gaye is the baddest motherfucker ever is that what I just said ever um yeah that there ever was that's what I that there ever was um this song so I've been studying it this week and I was uh I'm kind of going through some things uh, professionally right now, and I it was really what caused a delay from my previous episode. I had recorded 
um, my previous episode, um, one night, the night that I actually dated and, and call it out in the episode, but I did not release that episode for I believe it was literally a full week after because the day after I really recorded that episode and I'm into my editing and I'm getting it just right and I was ready to you know I could have been ready to post it uh, just the following night but what had happened at my job um, that day so as I write as before I come home that night that I would have just gotten into that episode and uploaded it was that my job laid off somebody for the first time in all of the years that I've been working there. And that was exceptionally devastating for me. It brought back too much of a, a um, in the moment, deep feelings of what I used to do for my living, uh, which was in my career in human resources. Unfortunately, that was a very integrated part of the roles that I had in the various organizations that I worked for was laying people off firing people, laying people off. There is nothing more disgusting of a feeling to feel when you take someone's livelihood away from them. And for the fact that that occurrence happened to a coworker of mine, actually, you know, I'm going to honor her in honor of her. It is exactly the person that I was referring to in my episode nine, Marvin Gaye's journey to what's going on when I was explaining that I work in a collaborative environment and I work with young, positive attitude. What can I do? I will do anything just, you know, willing to go that extra mile and, you know, willing to learn uh, eager to learn and just the best, most positive attitude of someone young that I have worked with ever. And unfortunately, that was the beautiful spirited person that was let go. So that was very, very devastating. I, I just couldn't, my heart, I couldn't put up an episode where I'm dropping the F-bomb and just being a little bit cocky and a little bit too much. Like, so then I even, you know, just edited that episode down to where it was enough that I could just in my heart release it. Um, it represented a day before, you know, where those were my circumstances. I didn't have worries like that. And then that just goes to show life, right? And in a day, things dramatically changed. So... Um, yeah, there's just been, uh, some creepiness, you know, around my, um, my livelihood right now. It's like, how sure of a footing is there going on with things right now in my situation? And, um, it's, it's just been, you know, foremost in my priority of things to where, um, and just kind of, you know, it can get into your head and kind of get into your spirit a little bit. And it can get into the way of me being able to, um, you know, provide you the best experience through these podcasts. So I, that is why there has been a, you know, longer lapse in time from this episode getting up because it'll still be a day or so from when I'm recording it right now. Um, you know, from the previous episode. Um, and I don't even really know what that's a tangent for. I, I can't really recall how that was tying to the song, but let's just therefore get back into the song. Um, so yeah, this is, this song is our first unleashing upon us of Marvin Gaye just demonstrating his groove ability. Right. And and what his groove is going to be all about. Oh, yes, I do know why I got into that tangent. There is there's this uncertainty in my life right now. I'm definitely feeling such an entrepreneurial um, spirit in me right now. It is what inspired me and, and lit this flame underneath my ass to very quickly get this podcast up and running very quickly, get my Pinterest page up and running. I'm excited to say I'm at over I'm close to I'm like 200 people shy of 17,000 views per month on my Pinterest page now starting from zero I remember I got my Pinterest page up and I had my first couple of boards and I was over at my sister's house uh, and I was just explaining this whole project that I was launching and you know I like I said I had never done Pinterest before that and at that point I had maybe had like five views and so then 
a couple days later, I was able to be over at her house and I was just showing her. And actually, we were looking at what it looks like on her cell phone because I set it up on my computer. Guys, I am not a technology person. I'm not a cell phone person. I'm not a telephone person. For a number, a good many number of years, I legitimately lived in my home without a telephone, period. A landline and fuck for sure, not a cell phone. So I'm not... <laughs> So that legit, if I ever did need to use the phone, um, I was living in an apartment at that time and there was a, a free phone for everybody to use in the business center of the um, leasing office. So if I ever emergency had to use the phone, I had to trek over to there and use the phone. So it was just a legitimately um, very strong message that I was sending that I don't do phones. I don't know why I needed to make that message like so extreme like that, but... <laughs> Um, anyway, I'm just not a cell phone person. I refuse to text. I, you know what? It's like, don't, don't text me. I'm not responding to texts. I don't do that shit. We are not made to express everything that we can say in spoken words, which only takes a few seconds and then prolong and drag that out into having to type the words that I would speak. I am a unique speaker, I would say. And so it is a little bit difficult for me. If I try to write everything that I say, um, it doesn't necessarily come through the same. But uh, yeah, I'm not going to take the time on a tiny ass screen on a little teeny tiny ass touch keyboard. I'm not doing that. I, I, I do not. I, I have gotten to a point it's been all of 2019 and most of 2018. I just, I refuse to text. Uh, we're going to speak on the phone. Okay. Cause if we're texting back and forth, we're both sitting by our phones. So we could just as fucking easily be speaking to each other. And we're going to do that if we're going to communicate. So, you know, it's like, there's a, there's a limit to all of this technology and where it does get to be a little bit ridiculous. There was nothing wrong with the old school picking up a phone and hearing someone's voice. So, um, but anyway, it occurred to me that I needed to see what was the experience for someone viewing my Pinterest page from their cell phone because I had not looked at what everything uh, was experienced like on that small of a screen. So we were looking at my stuff on her phone and she pointed out to me she was like hey she was like you got 64 views and I was like I know dude isn't it really cool and so it has skyrocketed from there to where today I logged in and I'm at 16,800 so that's that's everybody but you know what it is it's Marvin Gaye that's what I knew I was not going to have a problem getting viewership um eventually this thing picking up to even more listenership because it's about Marvin Gaye. This is not about my reputation. It's about Marvin Gaye. Okay. And it is about like I have explained and it is my mission. Um, and it is my honor to honor my mission about Marvin Gaye, which is that it will never be anything salacious. It will never be anything that is less than just showing the full admiration and respect that Marvin Gaye is due. So if you're here on this channel and you're here for that type of a reason, for wanting to know something more about Marvin Gaye, then you have landed at the right location, my friend, because, yeah, we're talking about Marvin Gaye is the baddest motherfucker that there ever was, okay? Rest assured then the content needs to focus and revolve around that. And, and we will aim to please with that. So it's just, there was an entrepreneurial spirit that was like, create a podcast, do that. Why not? You know, you have your niche. You know what you want to talk about. You are an expert about what you want to talk about. Get it up and running, do it. So as there have been these changes in the stability of where I'm employed right now, there has been just this itching spirit inside of me to change up my circumstances, to not necessarily have them be that I am employed somewhere right now. Um, I've been having conversations with my dad just before this, this financial instability and security kind of 
showed itself into my situation um where just regardless of that it's been conversations of what do I want my next 20 years to look like anyway? You know, just as far as my level of satisfaction with what I'm doing with my career, you know, the the satisfaction that I get out of what I do day in and day out. You know, it's like it's time to make sure things are in alignment with what my ultimate goals are for myself. Starting to look real seriously at 20 years down the line from now. Like it's really just starting to feel like this moment right here does need to be a threshold. It does need to be a fork in the road. It does need to be a turning point. It does need to be a step up to another level. And so, um, just so many like, Oh, we could do this and we could start this business and we could just start doing that. Like so many thoughts are just in my mind right now. I'm just exploring, learning about so many different things right now. And here we go to the song. So, uh, definitely why I was sharing all of that is to get into my uh, study of this song this week. Um, play this song for yourself um, when you're at a moment like this, when something needs to be beginning, when there needs to be a very drastic change beginning in your life play this song and I'm, okay let me explain further what I mean by that I do and I use the word literally a lot I listen back to my episodes and I'm like oh my gosh I am annoying the hell out of myself with how much I use the word literally <laughs> There's a King of Queens episode, right, where uh, Doug's ex happens to bump into him and Carrie and she works at one of the really fancy department stores. And so she gets like a 40 percent off discount on stuff and she carries a shopaholic. So she definitely hits it off with this chick because the chick is like so desperate for friends and she just wants to hang out with Carrie all the time. And she wants to extend her discount over to Carrie. So Carrie's totally eating it up, but she quickly realizes that she can't stand this woman's personality. And one of the main things she can't stand about that girl is how she says the word literally all the time. <laughs> And I honestly, I don't feel like I normally in just everyday conversation am always spouting off the word literally. But as I have been just kind of catching myself up on my podcast here lately, I'm like, <laughs> I'm overusing the word literally. Okay, so I'm really trying to be mindful of that. I, I feel like I haven't really said it so far this episode. So um, but I am going to say it because it does it does apply right here. I do mean to literally play this song for yourself. Because as I've been listening to this song this week, um, from second one in the song, we're just this is it. This is it. This is the change. This is the drastic change. This is the beginning of Marvin Gaye groove being revealed to us. Okay. And that's a, a major thing. It, it, I, I want to encourage you like this in this life. And I'm not necessarily saying it because it's what I'm doing. Okay. But I, I want to say it to you and I want to say it to you. If you're on a threshold or on a verge of something, and maybe you just need that little extra, Hearing something from somebody else, maybe this is going to be like one of those do, 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 you know, like you were meant to hear this. Do something, start something brand new, make a drastic change, make a new beginning in your life, a monumental beginning, a birthing of something in your life and approach it in a way. That there is no hesitation, there is no lack of self-confidence, there is no questioning, there is no fear, there is no doubt as to you are about to just fucking do that thing. You know what I'm saying? That is the beginning of this song. Marvin, 
is revealing to us Marvin Groove for the first time in this song. Folks, come with me into the song Inner City Blues Makes Me Want to Holler. Is the song not to what today is, is July 30th of 2019. Is the song not one of the, to use Marvin's own term, groovy? Is the song not one of the grooviest songs that you've ever heard? Is the song not one of the hardest core demonstrations of groove that you've ever heard? Is the song not one of the most unique presentations of groove that you have ever heard? Is the song not one of the fucking grooviest, I think I'm coming back to where I started, songs that you have e ever heard? Okay, this is why I am telling you Marvin Gaye is the baddest motherfucker that there ever was before him in his time to fucking today. Who the fuck of these young punks out here is coming anywhere near this level of creativity, this level of inspiration, this level of brand new fucking sound? Do you know what I'm saying? They don't do it. They're... It, He was the baddest that there ever was, okay? And yet we've already gotten into in the previous episode, I don't give a fuck about Marvin's peers at the time. And yes, I know that there's the this and the that other artist of the same time frame that also has a really strong catalog and all of that shit. Yes and yes and yes. And I'm not here to disrespect any of them, okay? But this fucking podcast... <laughs> is about Marvin Gaye, okay? And it's all about Marvin Gaye. It is only about exalting Marvin Gaye, okay? So I really don't give a fuck about anybody else. And you just be here for that, okay? So um, this song starts in that degree, okay? It is the degree to which I'm telling you to go about living your life, okay? Make a drastic ass change. Make a drastic beginning. Step out in faith. Step out in confidence. Step out in mastery. Step out in knowledge. Step out in no doubt. Step out into something brand the fuck new from scratch. And approach it like a master. And just break it fucking down to the world what you were here to do. Okay? What you came to do in that effort. What you're about to do. What you're going to show somebody. What you're going to show yourself. But do it and do it full. And just don't hold back. And break it the fuck down for folks. He starts out... And he, you know what? Marvin's playing the piano in this song. And so I've been studying the piano. The piano is dun, 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 dun. I mean, that's. <laughs> dun, do 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 dun, do 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 dun. You know what I'm saying? It levels and levels and levels and levels up and that's what I'm, Marvin I think he he just needed to build that for us he's like he's building Marvin Gaye groove for us from scratch he is from scratch which is dun dun that's scratch right how much more scratch could we get than that one note on the piano OK, that song progresses and escalates to, like I said, one of the grooviest songs of all time. It is one of the most unique sounding songs of all time, people. And I say that because I mean that in all literal terms. There was nothing that sounded like that before it. I don't give a fuck what possibly sounded 
in the vein at the time. Uh, Like I said, I'm not here for his peers. And to this day, what the fuck sounds like that song? What the fuck has ever sounded like that song? Okay. He is building Marvin Gaye groove for us from scratch. And he is the baddest motherfucker that there ever was. And he is showing us something so brand new and so beginning. And he is building it for us real time from scratch. But by the end of that shit, do we not have a full understanding of, oh my God, Marvin. You know what I mean? Like, yes, and please, and forever, and thank you, you know? So... Uh, yeah, I really don't know if there would need to be too much more that I say about this song. Um, I, let me think about this for just a second, you know. It, it, here was something that just tonight has occurred to me. This, this album, what's going on, Marvin is showing to me, really, the most is about its sound. It's not so much about its lyrics. Don't get me wrong. Every single lyric is masterfully placed. Masterfully sourced. But honestly, for me, 26 years into listening to this album, and therefore feeling possibly a little bit of struggle in in how to re-approach these songs from a fresh perspective right but I have forced myself to do that and and part of of needing to accomplish that creates some pauses in between my ability to release episodes um I was playing for myself on my drive home from work tonight the 20 seconds from save the children and Only tonight, and for the first time in my life, did it occur to me. I'm going to say this, and then I do need to let you go, because... ah, Those 20 seconds, I didn't ever really realize until tonight that there's no words. He's legitimately not even using words, and it's everything everything in life. Mervyn Gaye is everything in life. Oh my gosh. You know, it's like you just have to be able to appreciate the gift that this man is, was, left behind of himself. Rely on it, please. You know, just get what you need as far as satisfaction and uplifting and positivity and just getting through this life through this music enjoy well friends that's it for this episode did we have fun i had fun (laughs) subscribe to our show so you never miss the enduring gifts of Marvin Gaye. And we're excited to announce that you can follow us on Pinterest at our page, pinterest.com forward slash Marvin Gaye underscore enduring underscore gifts. There, you can see our gorgeous picture boards for each podcast episode, among many others. These boards are full of images of Marvin capturing key moments from each episode. We're making this a listening and viewing experience for you. So until next time, thank you for listening.